We're now going to talk about the three rules that Rust is able to use to uh, to figure out uh, figure out lifetimes or to assign lifetimes by itself, and uh, it's pretty interesting to uh, to look at it and see how it works. And the um, the Rust book, the book, you know, the book, the main book that people use uh, has a uh, a very good explanation on that in uh, in chapter ten and. Uh, so um, I'm going to uh, explain those, uh, you know, using my own words uh, to give you, you know, like a second uh, sense, and then we're going to, you know, run some stuff. So the first rule is that uh, if um, if you give, say, like a function, um, a number of inputs. So let's say uh, input one, uh, we're calling it a, we're giving it a stir function. Um, let's see, what are we going to do? Return uh, stir. <clears throat> So we'll give it two stirs and we say input one, uh, stir input two, and we'll give it a stir. And then we will return a stir. So we'll do that. And then we're going to uh, try to return it. And this will not work because of uh, rule number one, what Rust does, it looks at this and uh, if, it, if, there's, um, if it sees two inputs and you know the references, it's going to give each of them a different lifetime. So from the point of view of the compiler, <clears throat> it's going to do this. Uh, it's going to uh, say, okay, we've got two things. So this function has two lifetimes, and I'm going to call them A and B, says the compiler. And uh, one of them is going to have one, and one is going to have another. And then you can see uh, now it's uh, <clears throat> it's got these two, two lifetimes. Actually, I'm going to delete them because... Uh, we're not going to do the compiler's work for it, and uh, you know we can look at the at the error message, and you can see uh, here's the problem. So this function's return type contains a borrowed value. That's true, uh, but you didn't say if it's coming from input one or input two. So that's because of rule number one. So it's saying these have two different lifetimes. Uh, I don't know what to do, and the uh, it actually tells you exactly what to do. It says, hey, why don't you try this? So it, it kind of knows what you, what you might be trying to do, and it gives you the suggestion. And most of the time, this is what you want to do. So you'll say, OK, no, it's not, uh, it's not two lifetimes. There's only one. Uh, this, uh, this lives as lo at least as long as the function. This lives at least as long as the function. And uh, you know we're going to return something that does the same. So like, uh, like you saw before, Sometimes the solution is just to uh, to put a bunch of A's in there. <clears throat> uh, it's not always the solution, so you can't just, you know, maybe you don't want one to live as long as the other, or there's some reason why it can't. Uh, but uh, there you can see uh, now now you can put two references in. You can uh, you can put input three in there and say, hey, you know what? This <clears throat> also lives as long as uh, as the other ones. And Rust is totally fine with that. So that is a uh, that's one interesting thing. Um, it's very good to know uh, when you have like two references coming in. So the second rule is right there. This is the uh, the second and the third are, are quite nice. It's it just says um, if you have one one input, uh, then Rust is just going to assign it to everything. So if you have a input like that. And we take these out, and then we uh, just return a, uh, a stir. <clears throat> uh, Rust is going to understand what you're doing because it's saying, okay, there's only one thing coming in. Uh, there's only one thing going out. So on the inside, it's going to say that gets an A, uh, this gets an A, and this gets an A because uh, <clears throat> you know everything is going to uh, it's going to work out just fine if you're if you only have one input. Uh, and of course, it's uh, it's not going to work if you if you uh, if you have this because uh, unless it's uh, you know a, uh, a static string. But if otherwise, uh, if it's not static, then the only way to return it would be to uh, create a string inside, which is going to die and uh, it's not going to live long enough. So, uh, but you know, Rust is uh, is smart enough to figure that out. And and by the way. You cannot, uh, you can't fool it. So you can't say, uh, you know, hey, uh, we're going to have one input and uh, one output, and I'm going to say let x equals uh, oops, uh, 
go string from like that and uh, reference to X which is a you know this is a stir and uh, you know please make this happen it's uh, it's not uh, you know you, you still can't fool it so uh, you can't use uh, lifetimes to uh, to trick the compiler you can only use it to uh, to guarantee that you're going to give it something that is uh, that is okay and then the uh, the third one um, we're just going to read it here because it, it makes uh, a lot of sense um, so you can have a, a bunch of uh, input parameters but if one of them is self or mute self then it's going to give the lifetime of self to to everything and that is because um, if you if you're bringing in let's say we're implementing this uh, this this struct here and you have this this function and uh, I don't know it does something and then it's got uh, a self here or a uh, or a mute self then um, then it, it's bringing in the whole uh, the whole the whole struct um, and um, it's it's just going to assign the uh, the same lifetime that that the struct has so you don't have to say like uh, a mute self you don't have to say like uh, declare a lifetime and say you know self lives for so and so length of time um, uh, let's see so uh, where is it the lifetime of self is assigned to all output lifetime parameters and so that is why uh, you also don't have to uh, worry about lifetimes when you have a method that is uh, is doing that with self um, reference to self or uh, a mute self so that is uh, the three rules that uh, that gives you an idea into uh, how Rust looks at lifetimes. And the next uh, the next thing we're going to look at is uh, you know implementing a struct, and because um, you have to declare lifetimes there too. And uh, we're also going to look at what that means.